So three minutes with an MP3 file is usually something like about three megabytes. So it's, it's reduced it by a factor of 10, okay? So it reduces the amount of data 10 times. The way it does that is very similar, it's not exactly similar to, but it is similar to JPEGs in the sense that it is perceptual compression. And what happens is, for example, you know, if, you, if you're on a train with a friend and you're having a conversation, you're speaking, at a certain point you might be speaking to this friend and you're going on the train and then suddenly the train goes under a tunnel and then suddenly you, you can't hear what you are saying to your friend, okay? So in this, because the sound of the train in the tunnel is so loud, you can no longer hear what your friend is saying to you. But... That audio data has not disappeared. That audio data is still in the air, because all it is is vibration, remember, it's all a wave is, is vibration through the air. That vibration that your friend is causing by speaking is still in the air. It's just that your ear cannot pick that up, because the vibrations caused by the sound of the train going through the tunnel is so much greater. Okay, So again, it's... Your, that data is there in the air, but your ear is not hearing it. So what MP3 does, in all sound, it finds all the data that your ear cannot hear, okay, and basically removes it, okay, and that essentially is what MP3 compression is. So a huge amount of the data that we get through this sampling is kind of, it's, it's, it's just the human ear can't hear it. It's just not there. And, the, re and the, the term that is used, when one sound becomes louder than another sound, so much so that you cannot actually hear it, we can say that sound becomes masked. The sound becomes masked by the other sound. That vibration is still in the air. The kind of like, the samples might still pick it up, but your ear cannot hear it, okay? And that is basically what MP3 eliminates, okay? as well as doing some normal data compression at the end as well. Okay, so that's essentially what it is. I'll just sum up again. So that's what we're doing with, with digitization. We're turning a continuous wave into a set of samples. Um, and the, the, this is what the sampling process is. Okay, we make the wave from these, these sets of samples. We recreate it. Okay, so we, we reconstruct the wave by doing these samples. But the sampling frequency, how often you sample, whether it's 8,000, 11,000, 16,000, 22,000, or 44,000, does have importance. Because as you see, if I sample this wave at those points only, it seems like there is no wave at all. Okay. Because if I sample it at that frequency, I always catch the wave at the wrong point. It seems like there isn't a wave because I have sa haven't sampled often enough. Okay. Okay. And then you can also have false waves. Therefore, you see the much a very kind of small wave is turned into a much longer wave because of the position of the sampling. So that's all the, basically the problem that happens when you don't sample quickly enough. Those are the major, the most common levels at which you sample, 22,000 and 44,000. <coughs> I'll say the other variables, sample rate, okay, so the sample rate is how often, the bit depth is whether it's 16-bit, 8-bit, 24-bit, and the number of channels, that just simply means mono or stereo, or of course 5.1. Okay. Um, using classical data compression does not work so well on audio and video data. Um, the, this, the compression has to use the, the, the idiosyncrasies of the perceptual system, namely the human ear. And this is what happens. This is what masking is. If two sounds of the same volume um, are, are played together, your ear will hear them both. But at a certain point, as one sound becomes higher than another sound, it is no longer audible. Okay. And that sound will be masked, and the MP3 algorithm can eliminate that data from.
from that sound. So masking thus quantifies the amount by which the level of audibility for one sound is raised by the presence of another. And it can then delete any audio data presence in a signal which would be imperceptible to the human ear.